first I want to thank Lee and uh, the association here for the invitation. My name is Bill Christie. I work for the U.S. Forest Service, uh, the Southern Research Station in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, what we've got is a, a tool, a web-based mapping application, that you can use to monitor the health of your forest. Um, well, the good thing about this system is that it's highly repetitive. Every eight days we get a fresh image. And this is wall to wall, uh, uh, east coast to west coast. So uh, we've got a high repetition and it allows us to, to uh, monitor uh, the potential disturbances and also track recovery. Um, we detect all types of forest disturbances. The spatial resolution of the satellite sensor that we're using is rather coarse. It's about 13 acres. Uh, we really can't do this highly repetitive every eight days with a sensor like Landsat with a much smaller resolution. So we have to use this kind of more coarse view. And we like to think of this as a strategic platform. It's not going to tell you exactly what the disturbance is but it's going to highlight, it's going to turn on, and it's going to show you areas that you need, someone needs to go out on the ground or uh, focus in on it a little bit more. So it's a strategic type of platform. Uh, we don't do this by ourselves. We work with Stennis, uh, NASA Stennis Space Center, the Aerospace Center, and the Oak Ridge National Lab. Uh, we rolled it out last year, but it's been in existence for a couple years. Uh, we've already won a couple, won a couple nationally recognized uh, awards. We've been in the National Woodlands Magazine. Um, our web-based viewer we call the Forest Change Assessment Viewer. It's the main delivery vehicle for you to look at these images. And the University of North Carolina in Nashville, the National Environmental Modeling Analysis Center, UMAC, that's who built and is serving this application. It's totally open to anyone, no user IDs, it runs on almost any computer. It's very intuitive and it shows the three most recent national disturbance maps as well as you can look at historical stuff too. There's other layers in the viewer and that's why we call it an assessment viewer. It's not only are you looking at the force change images, but we're putting layers in there to help you assess what may be causing that disturbance. We don't really like to use it uh, to, to say what it is. So uh, we're giving a lot of ancillary layers to uh, give you a weight of evidence approach of what it may be, and I'll show you a lot of examples. Uh, so you can see these images as soon as we do. How it works, it's a very simple comparison between uh, the current greenness and the historical greenness. And it's a complex formula that we do with the satellite uh, bands the NDVI, normalized, uh, normalized difference vegetation index. And that's essentially a, a greenness index. And so we're working with that relative scale of greenness. When we find disturbance by comparing what I call today's greenness, or the most recent image that we have, with some historical baseline. And we've done an 11 year, every eight day historical database of this MODIS satellite imagery. So that's how we can do this. So locations that are currently less green than in the past are marked as potentially disturbed. Locations have an actually more greenness than we expect or on the historical baseline. It may represent vigorous or recovering vegetation. And we've limited our change images to only forested cover types. We're not looking at ag, we're not mapping uh, ag and pasture. And we want to, in the future, turn those masks off because out west, with rangeland and pasture, it is important to see the condition of that. And actually, grass is kind of the uh, uh, harbinger of drought because drought shows up first there. So um, that's something that we're going to advance. So we express this uh, change in greenness in this color range. So if it's less than expected, it's reds, greens, and yellows. If it's more than the historical baseline, uh, we show it in blues. And we, there's three slightly different maps uh, produced in every eight days. And in the viewer, you'll see these. They're, they're three different baselines. 
We use a one year, a three year, and an all year baseline. So you want to see what today's, the change that's happened over a certain pixel um, today, over just the past year, you choose the one year baseline. And here's an example of the one year baseline. These are twin tornado tracks. This is the one year baseline for a certain date. Uh, Kentucky, Eastern Kentucky's on the left, West Virginia's there. And I'm going to blink these. That's the all year, one year. So essentially, in the one year, all you're seeing is the disturbance that's happened over one year. If you turn on the all year baseline, uh, you see a lot more disturbance show up. So I just want you to be aware that depending on what your uh, effort and interests are, the different baselines can help. Those are all the strip lines that have come in over the past few years. All types of disturbances are shown from natural and human induced stuff. It's very sensitive. Uh, severe weather, drought, flood, insect outbreaks, uh, human induced stuff, thinning, uh, harvest, um, and um, uh, it's it's turned out to be really really good. We'll take a couple look at the forest change images for the, the big tornado event that went through northern Alabama, uh, or really the southeast um, uh, last year, year before. And if you can hopefully you can see those red uh, kind of scratch marks across the uh, uh, image there. Zooming in, Tuscaloosa is on the lower left, Birmingham on the right. I think this is an all year image because all that red spottiness in between the tracks are uh, probably harvest sites. But pay particular attention to what the tornado was doing before it hit Tuscaloosa on the lower left. It really wasn't doing that much until it hit the city. Uh, this image, uh, we're zoomed in, you can start to see the actual pixels, but the take home message here is that it works well to uh, show levels of disturbance and it also kind of shows severity, which is really important. You know, as that track is moving away from that track, you get less and less uh, severe colors, and that's important. So the system's very sensitive. Here's a tornado with the great smokies. Uh, they were in, in, uh, in the upper kind of left center. That's a wind event. In in house, we always validate these disturbances with Landsat imaging. And there's a Landsat imaging, uh, much higher spatial resolution around at the same time. And you can see the kind of the bare earth type symmetry in that side of the image. This is an example of a real quick wind event uh, southeast of Kingsport, Tennessee. This popped up all of a sudden. And uh, with further research, uh, we found out that this was uh, uh, a high wind event that just stripped the leaves. And more than uh, six, eight weeks later, we had recovered and we had a ephemeral type of damage. Uh, this is the actual watershed, very highly protected. It feeds its municipal water source. We thought this might have been a bug outbreak. You can't use herbicides or chemicals or uh, insecticides in this area. It turned out to be a hailstorm. Uh, that produced that damage. Here's some damage, uh, the, the more uh, damaging colors we call departure. Uh, this is forest tent caterpillar in the bottom line hardwoods of South Carolina and North Carolina. This is an aerial, uh, we noticed the disturbance on the Pearl River, it's on the boundary between Mississippi and uh, Alabama. So uh, they flew it, this is what they saw. We asked them to provide us a polygon, uh, aerial sketch mappers. They've got a system in the plane where they can denote a polygon around the disturbance event. And so it matches very well what our viewer is showing. Uh, the same disturbance, these are eight every eight day <coughs> image uh, snapshot. So the disturbance is centered in the center of each one of these little graphics. And you can see how fast it, uh, it kind of came on slow over three weeks and departed. And so uh, this was a quick uh, defoliation and it recovered within two, two months. And really the old uh, consequence is really probably a loss of forest productivity. Pennsylvania is the poster child of forest insects damage. This is zoomed in on Allegheny National Forest, and I'll link this Landsat image. You know, it matches really well with the service. 
Uh, it handles severe stuff, wildfire very well. This was a mapping effort. These, they probably use Landsat on the ground in our system. Uh, it matches it really well. And just notice the fire shadow uh, in that, off that lake in the lower, uh, lower center. Um, you can see how the, the lake stopped the advancement of that fire from the upper left and the lower right. Payne's Bay, monthly snapshots. Uh, you can see what's recovered and what hasn't. So again, the severity of the burn. So the Finocchi Swamp, this, this place gets burned so often, um, it's recovered in, in a couple of months. Um, so we're not measuring disturbance in a strict sense, but we're measuring a departure from normal phenological timing. And our system is both spatially and temporally explicit. In other words, we're looking at the same pixel all the time, the same point on the ground, at the same time of the year. So uh, it doesn't shift or anything like that. Um, so we're very confident the way the system's set up. But it, we're not only detecting insects, disease, uh, invasives, and strong weather, but we're, uh, we're also detecting weather departures caused by extremes of precip and temp, you know, extremes of hot and cold, wet and dry. We found that it's proven to be very sensitive to drought, warm and cold periods, freeze events, shifts in the timing of leaf green up and senescence. So you can see that if you've got an early or a late spring or fall and it compares it to the previous year, you know, those colors are going to turn on. So just be cautious in the spring and the fall of it. If it's either early or late, it's going to show up. And during the regular growing season, um, you don't get that kind of variation. Before. This is a flood event. So just because you see hot colors, uh, don't be alarmed. We had to use USGS stream gauge data uh, to denote that these, this was a flood area. And that's what was the cause of covering up the greenness and turning on that higher departure. At the same time we saw this Gami fire in the Bailey Waters, uh, we noticed in the uh, upper peninsula of Michigan, you know, the whole area was kind of turned on with higher departure colors. And we found out that that was a, an early hard frost event that hastened the, uh, the end of uh, the growing season. So compared to the previous year, it had, uh, it had departed sooner, and so that whole area was turned just be aware of the, on the, the growing season, the spring and the fall, that if there's a slight shift in timing of the phenological kind of season, then it's going to show up in large regional areas. We pick up drought really well. There's the U.S. drought monitor in the, in the bottom center. And actually, we've talked to the folks who produce the drought monitor, and they're considering using our system as one of the many inputs that they use to produce that drought monitor. We'll talk real quick about our website if you want more information. It's at forewarn.forestthreats.org. There's a lot of info there. Forewarn.forestthreats.org. Um, there's a link to the viewer. I think that little southern, uh, that uh, US map in the bottom is a link. And there's also in the text, there's a hyperlink there. Which I'll show you. Uh, tabs in the, along the top, you can, under introduction, you can find more info as to the science of detection and the science of assessment. There's under data, there's data access for your GIS folks that are uh, typically savvy. They can bring our full board images into the desktop and they can, you can overlay your own data on our images. And I can help you. Uh, there's training uh, webinars that we first, uh, when we launched the system, um, that we recorded and there's access to. There's also a lot of health videos, how to use the viewer under this training, under the support training section. And now let's take a look at the viewer. In the lower left, there's a user's guide. And so if you get stuck, just uh, go down there and open up the user's guide. Uh, the, there's a table of contents on the left and a uh, legend on the right. There's icons along the top that we'll, I'll quickly go into. They allow you to zoom in, zoom out, they're pretty intuitive. 
we can jump to uh, the previous extent or the next extent. Um, let's see, obtaining information, you can turn on or off either of the boxes on the left or right. Uh, there's an, uh, an identifying tool for any layer that you have turned on in the table of contents. If you use the identify tool, it'll report back to the window information about the layers that you have turned on. This next one we call Graph NDVI. This is a great tool we found very useful. What that represents is uh, 11 years of growing season with measurements every eight days. That is the NDVI response annually for 11 years. And when that thing drops, there's a disturbance. Now this is available for every pixel in the country. So we're not limiting it to just forested pixels. Um, so you can get an 11 year kind of greenness index measure. And the database behind this for the country is over uh, 70 billion rents. So it works really well. You can, uh, there's a base map drop down. You can have streets. The imagery is very important. So uh, turn that on once you get zoomed in. And uh, you, can, you can see what type of land cover you're looking and we bring these services in from uh, Esri, uh, the GIS. These are public kind of domain uh, data sources. So the imagery is pretty good. Which is what we've got all the tokens. Is the viewer also works as a, as a really cheap, good, cheap means to make the maps or screenshots of things that you need. Quick start guide. When you first open up the viewer, it's going to be positioned on the all year. This is the table of contents on the left. And we're, we're, we're kind of buried in the in this list of layers on the left. So look for forest disturbance detection maps. And uh, in our next version, this is going to change. But in this version, the all year baseline is going to be shown. I always work with the one year baseline. There's so much disturbance that shows up in the, in the all year that it's hard to interpret. So turn that off. Turn on the one year, the most recent one year baseline. And those are the three most recent images um, in each of the three baselines. We're going to add a baseline. I'll tell you that. Now, a really cool tool about uh, this viewer is we've got to share this map on the right hand side. If you open that up, if you see a disturbance that you want to share that that is someone or say go check this out or keep an eye on this, you can use the viewer, zoom into your area, turn on the layers, transparencies that you like, specifically zoom in, open up this tab and copy that URL, and it's the exact view that you're looking at. So you can paste that into an email, and all they have to do is click it, and they'll be zoomed right in. Um, there's two limitations and one awareness I want to tell you about. The way, because we're going um, with uh, the most cloud free image, CONUS wide, CONUS is determinus US, the way they have to do it, they look to get rid of clouds, they have to look back 24 days. And so that creates an application delay, a disturbance delay. So the way it sits now, um, there's about 24 day delay. Uh, we're changing that with, the, with um, this year. We, we're we're uh, acquiring our images uh, and processing them in a different manner, and we can go down to as few as days to make it eight days. It's how long it takes to, um, for a disturbance to show up. You can't do the southern pine beetle, small little outbreaks. Our pixels are so large, 13 acres, it's likely that you're going to catch this thing. SPD gets to 13 acres, over 13 acres, hopefully. So, um, and then the awareness. At the edge of our forest mass, it's real sensitive to drought. There's a lot of pasture and crops, and so a lot of times you'll see disturbance show up on the fringe of our mass, and what that is, is uh, it's showing drought, usually. There are the other layers in the table of contents to help you determine. Give me a call uh, if you need help with any of that. Just know what you're looking at. Use the aerial. Turn on multiple images to see how a disturbance may progress. Um, and use the other layers in the viewer to help um, assess what it may be. We've got a new viewer coming out 
We've got that new baseline to show up the students is much quicker. Um, for more information, uh, you can contact me at wchristy at fs.fed.us or Bill Hargrove, he's the principal investigator at hnw at geolabel.org.